おはようございます。Hey everyone、um,。まあ俺のおはようございますなんだけどな。Uh, good morning.、Um, welcome to our third Japanese teaching lecturing stream. まあ lecture っていうかね。So today, on today's agenda, we have Genki Chapter 3 and all the good stuff it entails. So we will go over basic verb conjugation. We will learn the two types of verbs, u verb and ru verb, as well as the regular verbs,、um, and some new particles. So without further ado, let's jump in with some Genki, chapter three. Perfect. Date no yakusoku. So every chapter in Genki starts with a dialogue. And this one is no different.、Um, and some of you may already be able to guess the fated couple that we will be finding、uh, in, this, in this chapter. For it will be, yes, Mary and Takeshi. Hey, Vincent, how's it going?、Um, but yeah, for this chapter. We actually will save the dialogue for last because there's a lot to go over grammar wise.、Um, so it might be more beneficial to come back and revisit this as like a chapter summary kind of thing versus an introduction.、Um, but yeah, in general, the dialogues at the beginning of every chapter introduce all the things we're going to learn in the chapter all at once. So it's kind of a lot to take in. Today's my last day at work. Is that a good thing? Seems positive, right? Now I'm kind of unemployed.、Uh, so maybe less positive. <laughs> is that is it good? Is it bad? I need more context. Also, how's the music volume, by the way? Is it high relative to my voice or. Some mic checks. Maybe that. I'm not sure yet. Okay. Well, hopefully that goes well.、Um, like, genuinely,、uh, did you like, choose to. Music is fine? Perfect. Did you choose to, for it to be your last year? Or was it like, kind of a、uh, decision out of your control? Sorry, ni stemo. We can go over the Tango vocabulary list for chapter 3 of Genki. So we'll start with Ega. So they're nouns. I like that it drops it, it、um, splits it up into nouns, and even then, what kind of nouns like entertainment, food and drink, places, time. And then we'll get to verbs later and adjectives and adverbs. That's really nice. Nifty. Yeah, I quit. That's good, right? I'm glad you were able to take control like that, Vincent. Okay, so Ega. Ega is movie. Ongaku. Ongaku. Music. Zashi. Zashi is magazine. And then these words, if you guys、um, know you're hiragana katakana, you'll recognize that all of these are in katakana, which means what? Daitai, usually when you see words in katakana, It means they are borrowed words from other languages. It doesn't always have to be English, although English is pretty common.、Uh, English katakana loan words are fairly common, but you have words like arubaito, which comes from German, arbit, which means like job. But arubaito in Japanese means part time job, part time work. So, you know. And then pan comes from theoretically Latin <laughs> bread, but it could also be Spanish or even Portuguese. but... I was unhappy with the stuff I had to do there, so I'm happy, but it's still a lot of uncertainty right now. That's reasonable.、Um, and I'm sure it'll be that way for a small, foreseeable future, but with any luck, I'm sure you'll be great moving forward,、um, especially as the you know, world slowly reopens if, you know,、uh, God willing, this pandemic would blow over. I mean, of course, we have to take action too, but you know. Okay, so what are these katakana words? Sportsu. Sportsu. I have a lot of friends ask me about the difference between. This is a little bit outside the scope of the chapter, but 
um, since hiragana, katakana are preemptives to learning uh, Japanese, it's important that we kind of recognize the difference between uh, something that comes up quite often. So now is a great time to transition into my little. Ah, please ignore that. <laughs> I was doing some kanji practice earlier, testing out the the rig, if you will. Um, so I have a little graphics tablet. Uh, it's really tiny. It's like yay big, very small, specifically for this purpose. But a lot of people ask um, the difference between katakana. So we have katakana, right? Um, so I'll write in romaji for this part, but. Ah. Right, we have kata kana. Right, kata kana. So we have sheet, and that should look like this, right? And then n, which should look like this. And forgive like a little bit of a shakiness. It's not the best. Ah, perfect. It's slightly out of the way. Okay. Um, how do I do this? Ah. Stop. Please correct the eraser. Okay. Let me see if I can. I can definitely drag the worksheet. Perfect. Stickman, nineteen ninety nine. Thanks for the follow, mate. Welcome. Great timing as you like obstructed the the view of the writing pad, but that's perfect. Sheet and. Uh, what do we do? What do we do? What do you mean by that, Stickman? Um, so she and and then I hear people get confused with tsu. Ah. Tsu. So it looks very similar to she, I grant you, but you can notice the line here. It looks like more of a uh, and there can be more distance between these two. I just the the hovering issue on the pen is a little bit weird, but the main difference is like the angle of these lines here. Um, so these can be like more horizontal, but these are more vertical. And then soul is the other one, and it's just the same. It's like like this. So what I tell people is like, look at these lines here, and you can recognize whether it be she or two, and then whether it be in or, or uh, so. But that's just my recommendation. Thank you, Soraka, for redeeming Stretch. It's very kind of you. Uh, so kind. Yokoso. So arigato. But yeah, so I just wanted to put that frame of reference in and low key test out the graphics tablet, uh, which we'll be using for kanji and like later on in this lesson, even conjugation of u verbs and ru verbs. Stretch is greater than hydrate. Need to save hydrate for potential fires. Oh, you're so right, Sirocco. And like, let's just hope that there's no fire that has to be put out for today's stream, eh? <laughs> okay, so this is... Wow, I always get to this swelling of the music too, this crescendo, this exact part that I want to explain. Okay, so this is sports. 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 Date. Date. Uh, yes, romantic, not a calendar date. So if you're like, oh, what's the date today? You don't say, date wa nan, kyo no date wa nan desu ka? It means like, what's the date that we're going to go on today versus what's today's date? Um, so you have to be careful. You like the music? I'm so glad. Um, I can link it. I think it'll link the whole playlist, but if you just. It'll start on this song that if you like it, you can um, check it out. Oh, that's a huge arse link. But yeah. Konbanwa, konbanwa, John. You missed my beautiful, like, drawing pad session describing the difference between katakana, tsu, so, uh, tsu, so, shi, and n. Um, but basically, it's the, the angles here that make the big difference. Okay. So, uh, thanks. Yeah, of course, mate. Okay, so, tennis, tennis. Terebi, televi television, TV. Katakana da! So, katakana desu. And the reason I brought it up was to show, like, for these katakana words, the tsu came up in sports. 
So I just wanted to, you know, give a little anecdote, clarification of how I can recognize the differences between the four confusing ones. So we're going to see a lot of random katakana words, but they're important because they'll be the subjects and objects of our direct objects of our uh, verb sentences moving forward for this chapter. So, ice cream. Ice cream is ice cream. I've heard this be called like soft, like softo before as well, which is like soft cream, like, you know, uh, like an ice cream cone or whatever. Um, ice cream. Ice cream. Or ice. Ice is also pretty common. Um, ice cream <laughs> literally means ice cream, right? You can hear it. But if you just shorten it to ice by itself, it's not actually just ice. It literally is short for uh, the whole ice cream, which is a little bit confusing. But yeah, ice is specifically kori. Kori. But yeah, so ice cream is correct, but ice is also perfectly fine. Asagohan. Asagohan. Literally. Uh, gohan is like kind of a suffix. You can see this kanji here. Um, and it means gohan. Gohan technically means cooked rice. Whereas like there's lots of words for uncooked rice like kome, for example. But gohan means un or cooked rice. And then like it becomes a word for meal as well. So asagohan. This go is like the prefix o. It's an honorific prefix. Um, most of the time it's o, but it can also be go. So basically, if you just think of it as asa, which means morning, and then gohan, which basically means meal, right? Which comes from cooked, cooked rice. So morning meal, asa gohan, breakfast. Um, osake, osake means sake or alcohol. Um, it's best probably translated as alcohol, but when you hear it in like Western countries, it'll mean sake, like the rice wine. Oh yeah, the rice thing is complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only know the one word for uncooked rice, which is kome, but there's a lot of them. Okay. And then ocha. Ocha is green tea. Hey, I did not know that. Well, I knew that. I just did forgot it because I only ever thought green tea is matcha, which is now popular enough in the West that I can just say matcha and like 99% of you will like, oh, matcha, like the stuff at Starbucks and like, sure, mate, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, ocha I guess defaults to green tea, and then I know kocha is black tea, so that's good. I thought ocha just meant tea, but apparently means green tea, more you know. Massive overlap here with what was in my Anki today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true, John. Shochu if you want to order sake. Ah, uh, hi by the way. Hi, Arthur, how are you? Lo matcha versus ocha. Yeah, so there's ocha. I'm pretty sure ocha just means tea in general. I don't know why it's translated here as green tea. Let me let me look it up before I sound like a silly person going against a textbook. But show so much kudasai. Okay, so ah, it is tea, but it's usually green tea. So I'll call it fifty fifty with uh, me in the textbook. Okay, I think it's green tea. Kappa. Okay, okay. Naruhodo. Because, like, ocha, just in general, this just means tea, right? And then ocha, is, this is honorific o. So it just means tea. And then matcha can be green tea or hojicha or, like, roasted tea. Like, in mugi cha is barley tea. And then all of them have the suffix cha, which is tea, right? Is what I was thinking. But I could very well be wrong. Um, but, yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> There's different types of cha or ocha. And then they'll be specified before that. So like kocha or mugi cha, hoji cha, matcha. Anyway, tea. Kohi, coffee. <laughs> it's funny because they have so many words for tea, right? Because tea can be made from so many different things. But kohi, it's just kohi. Like uh, sometimes if you go to like a Japanese Starbucks, you can see like espresso or something. And it'll be like espresso. But really, it's just like very few words, right? But although in, in Japan, like cafe ore, and I'm sorry... So sorry, French speakers, aka Arthur in this chat, Luxfus. But like, coffee with milk. But like, there's really only one major word for coffee. Let's be real. Okay, so similar to Asagohan, there's Bangohan. This ban means evening. And then again, Gohan is like a meal. So evening meal is dinner, right? Theoretically. Hambaga. <laughs> uh, important word for every American going to, to Japan. Hambaga means burger or hamburger, you know? 
um, Hiro Gohan. Interesting that they introduced Hiro Gohan after Ban Gohan, even though it means lunch. So you can guess what Hiro or Ohiro. Ah, actually, um, here's a bit of tidbit. So Hiro is afternoon, and Gohan means meal, right? So afternoon meal is lunch. But this after lunch could also be called Ohiro. Ohiru, which is like the honorific O coming before this Hiru, and that can also be um, lunch, which is a weird thing. And I heard it for the first time in college outside of a Japanese class. Um, but I guess that's a different story for another time. So as long as we don't go over counting, we'll survive. We went over counting in chapters one and two, I think, Sorako. I mean, like, I know. I definitely was present and aware for all of those things on camera. Matcha is more, if more often, matcha, if often more towards a specific green tea in powder, while ocha is more for your usual green tea. Ippiki. <laughs> Ippiki. One small animal. <laughs> oh, oh, counting like that. That's what you mean. Okay, okay. Kofiore. Yeah, exactly. Zogi, zogi. Merci. Okay, and mizu, water. So, oh, there's one thing, um, it's so weird, because we went over the lesson, like, basically a couple of days after I went over Genki chapter 2, um, last week, I was recommended a video by Onomapu, which, if you guys are in the Discord or listen to the previous VODs of, you know, the lessons, that is a channel rec I recommend on YouTube. But it was like, uh, why Japanese people? What do Japanese people say instead of ie? Or how do Japanese people say no? You never really hear ie in Japan, um, apparently. So we all learn it as ie, but like, and it's not like the whole stereotypical lecture on how Japanese people don't say no or they say ah, chotto. I mean, it, it kind of is, but if you specifically want to say ie, ie for no, um, they most likely shorten it to ya, like i and then ya, ya. Um, but I'll kind of touch back on that when the time arises in the future. But anyway, this is not ie, this is ie, ie. And the difference is the e sound is much shorter. So instead of ie, it's ie, ie. And that means house or home. Uchi also means house, home, my place. Um, they're interchangeable most of the time. Gakko. Gakko. Remember the small two makes the next uh, mora or the next consonant sound specifically like a harder thing. So it's like almost like a pause and then a stronger like push through like Gakko. Gakko. Like that. When you put it together. Gakko. Satya ito jerk. <laughs> you also don't hear anata. That's right. So um, a little bit slightly tangential. Um, but yeah, these kinds of dropping the subject so you don't hear like a lot of watashi wa or anything like that. You also don't hear anata. Anata specifically um, can be quite rude actually. Anata, anta, they're quite rude words. Um, and of course, everything's contextualized, con context based. And as a foreigner, you won't, you know, be um, slighted against or like hated because you say anata or anta, but. Um, it's kind of funny, but like as your Japanese improves, which it absolutely will, um, as your Japanese improves, the more your kind of potentially rude slip ups become ruder because you're treated less as gaijin. I mean, you are treated as gaijin, gaijin atsukai, but uh, they expect you to be better. So uh, I said anata once. Um, actually, I said anta once because I was a bit tipsy and I definitely didn't mean it in a rude way. But the person who I was speaking to was like, that's a bit rude. And I'm like, oh shit my bad um so i was like kind of kind of awkward um but you know she forgave me because i was gaijin and i was learning so and i obviously didn't mean any kind of disrespect so shishi desu kara not jerk yeah 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 <laughs> if you say anata you get deported true story not true story john don't spread these falsehoods there's already so many falsehoods john uh, but basically avoid anata and avoid watashi unless it's really necessary um i would genuinely avoid it so but yeah good good tidbit sorako okay so gakko and now just like asagoham asa by itself means morning right morning meal is breakfast asa is morning makes sense right 
You're lying, that's why I say ito. No, no, I realize. Shishi desu kara. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tomorrow, John's favorite word. Ashita. Ashita. And so, um, this is kind of a pronunciation thing, and I'll turn the volume down just a little bit from the background music because I really want to focus on this, but. Okay. So, ashita. You can hear me say ashita, right? You don't hear ashita. Ashita. Even though it's hiragana shi, right? Sashi su se so. It's shi. But the e sound gets kind of mm, clipped a bit. So instead of ashita, it's ashita. Just like how in des, des, it's not desu. Although you can say desu if you're trying to be like kojin deki ni, like if you want to. Anyway, that's that's neither here nor there, but ashita, um, and you can also hear it in like uh, I've put myself on the spot, and I realize I don't have a strong continuation. So, uh, editor, please clip it. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have an editor. I'm probably not even gonna like you know edit this out. But anyway, <laughs> it's not ashita. It's ashita, mm. and that means tomorrow. Yes, and there's so many sentences, anime, drama that has the word ashita because it's tomorrow, right? Like, you know, uh, I tend to pronounce it kino. <laughs> yeah, and uh, why I said this is John's favorite word is because he mixes up with the word yesterday, which is kino. kino. Um, but yeah, okay, so next, itsu, itsu is when. If you remember from our Koso Ado chapter 2, we learn dore, which is which, and doko, which is where. And here's a not, and we knew nani already, which is what. And now here's another question, uh, word, question word. <laughs> Those words are supposed to be together. Itsu, which is when. Itsu, which is when. Okay. Kyo, kyo, today. Nani nani goro, nani nani goro, which is uh, used with a specific time, like o'clock time. And then you add goro after it, which means like around this time specifically. Um, good, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that later for sure. Konban. Konban. This means now and evening. Evening now, which is tonight, right? It makes sense. Kanji makes sense sometimes. Mutsukashi nan nekido. Okay. Shumatsu. 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 Shumatsu ryoko. Shumatsu, shumatsu, I guess, is the proper pronunciation. Shirankido. Shumatsu. Weekend. Uh, doyobi. Doyobi. Saturday. Nichiobi. Nichiobi. Sunday. Mainichi. Mainichi. Every day. Maiban. Maiban. Every night. Same ban as in konban and bangohan. This one, Bangohan. So yeah, these make sense. Okay, I'm gonna pop off. Jane, Matanie. Matanie, Suroko. Okay, so here's where we get to the interesting parts uh, that I'm gonna skip over. I'm gonna skip over and come back to you, just like with the dialogue. Um, but we can go to the adjectives. E. E, which is good, right? E. You guys have all heard this word before I'm sure. E. Good. Hayai. Hayai, which means early or fast. Um, and now adverbs. Uh, this is really cool because remember how I said like Japanese is kind of like modular slash formulaic in a way? This is a perfect example of that. So an adverb of like not much is ammari. Ammari. Ammari plus a negative form of a verb that follows it. So it's like, uh, we'll touch back on it after we go over some verbs, uh, but we can uh, use it with verbs. And zenzen also goes with a negative conjugation. This negative is basically a negative conjugation of a verb. And it's really important because uh, if you use, it's like, if you've ever heard in Spanish, and I don't know if this might be the case with other languages too, but 
in Spanish, we say like, um, uh, like, how do I explain it? Uh, we'll come back to that too, because my brain's kind of like, yeah, I, mean, I haven't spoken Spanish in a long time. That's unfortunate. Okay, but okay, so we'll move on to some frequency adverbs. These are all basically frequency adverbs, these, these three, um, and then this one, and then this one. Except for chotto. So amari means not often or not much. Zenzen means not at all, never. Taite means usually. Chotto means a little. Um, and we hear chotto used a lot. Chotto is like a, a panacea of words. You use it in so many uh, so many situations that it is a frequency adverb, but it's more of a, a catch-all adverb as well. The stream makes me want to learn another language. That's really good, Vincent. That's the point please learn another language it's really good for actually you're european so you're probably already like you know trilingual no cobra can lion pride i'm glad you like it okay uh toki doki not to be confused with doki doki which is an onomatopoeia that some of you guys might already know which means like your heart pounding toki doki means sometimes and then yoku yoku is often much hi goshi welcome Okay, um, so some set expressions. So desu ne. We've we've definitely all heard this, um, unless you really haven't watched like any kind of Japanese language media at all. But so desu ne means, uh, yeah, that's right. Um, but it can also if you okay, depending on how you say it. So if you say like, ah hi, so desu ne, it means like yeah, that's right. But if you're like, hmm, so desu ne, like the way you say it, um. Not even necessarily like inflections or like pitch accent based, but like the the cont um, contemplative way that you say it means a different thing. So if you say like "hi so this in it," you're like, "oh yeah, that's right." If it's like "hi so this," ignoring the high part, like mm, "so this in it," it's like, "let me see, let me think about it." So it's very contextual. I speak German and English fluently and understand some French and Spanish. Okay, Vincent, soft flexing is real here. Not all countries are Euro in Europe are equal when it comes to learning languages. No, probably not. But like, you know, um, theoretically, those at least within the European Union, I think there's like 26 or 28, 27, maybe after Britain. I don't know. Really, I'm not European. Um, but yeah, theoretically, it's easier to um, speak more languages. No. Maybe that was um, kind of stereotypical. And if so, I apologize. Maybe what I want to learn is the language of the Maori. I'm fascinated with New Zealand. Okay, interesting. Was it uh, what what you know inspired that fascination in you? All right, uh, demo. Demo is one of the words I've most often heard uh, Luxfa say in Japanese. It means but, um, like a objection kind of but, not like a but but. <laughs> And then Doldeska. Doldeska. How about this? Or how is this? Or how about, how about blank and how is blank? Um, it's another kind of question mark or question word. Uh, but like we can think of it as a question phrase instead of just a question word. Okay. So now we get into the nitty gritty, the, the real meat and potatoes. Yes, potatoes, <laughs> as you would say in and in English, specifically before John gets mad at me, specifically in America, America, USA. Um, Bumpo. So here we go. This is we we've made it to chapter three. We've we've studied Japanese for several hours now. Um, we've put in a lot of time and effort. We've learned our hiragana katakana, and finally we get to speak like preschoolers with uh, basic verb conjugation. Um, although we're using tenego, which is, you know, uh, a form of politeness that is unbeknownst, unbeknownst to preschoolers. So that's cool. At least we can flex on the, on the four-year-olds of Japan. Taters. Exactly. Meat and taters. Meat and taters. I don't think we say, but yeah, basically potato, potato, taters. Yeah. All of it. Okay. So specifically because I made a verb or sorry, I added a uh, tag to the stream called uh, reading aloud, I will do so at first and then try to parse it in, in my own thoughts, in my own way. 
uh, and hopefully that's easier to digest, speaking of meat and potatoes. I know, uh, I pun very often. Get dabbed on stupid four-year-olds? Exactly, John. We are polite and you don't even know the concept of politeness. Now go play in some mud, kick some sandcastles over you, your freaking plebs. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so verbs in Japanese conjugate or take various shapes, you know, just like 99% of languages, right? Except for, I want to note, it'll look like a dense page filled with information, but Japanese conjugation of verbs is much easier than that of like romantic languages like Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, French, so on and so forth. Much, much simpler. Okay, um, in this lesson, we learned three forms, the dictionary forms, the present tense affirmative forms, and the present tense negative forms. Okay, pretty simple, right? There are two kinds of verbs that follow regular conjugation patterns, and an example of each is below. Okay, so, um, I'm just gonna, we'll, we'll ignore the table for now, and I'll speed read, not really, but low-key speed read the section underneath, and then I'll make, I'll use my beautiful tablet to, uh, draw out some examples and explanations, so. Taberu begin, belongs to the group of verbs called the ru verbs. Ru verbs are so called because if you add the suffix ru to the verb base, tabe, in the above lesson, tabe, uh, above example, to form the dictionary form. For the two long forms we learn in this lesson, you simply add the suffixes mas and masen instead of ru to the bases. If you just read that, I'm sure it's very hard to grasp, but that's why we'll go with it over it in details. We learned the four ru verbs in this lesson, taberu, neru, okiru, and miru. And their mas form, uh, long form, their present affirmative forms, tabemas, nemas, okimas, mimas. Another major group of verbs is called the u verbs. U verbs. The dictionary form of an u verb is like, uh, u verb like iku can be broken down into the base ik, iki, iki, there should be an i here, iki in the above example, and the suffix u. Huh? Oh, okay, 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 okay. So they meant like, hmm? <laughs> I don't, I don't even understand this, this sentence, to be honest. The long forms like ikimas and ikimasen den are formed with the base plus suffixes imas and imasen. This is really shoddy. In the uverb conjugations, you find letters shifting in the same row of hiragana chart. Ah, uh, naruhodo ne, so you ka. Okay, okay. We're going to ignore this second paragraph because it's confusing even me, and I know the subject matter pretty intensely. So. Here's where we'll switch to this and erase this jazz. Okay. So, here we go. Um, we'll talk first about do verbs, right? Do verbs. And if you have any questions, please, you know, type them at any time. And when I see them, I'll be happy to answer them. I don't know why this is here. Come on. Hang on, I'm being trolled. Okay. Oh, my mouse was head blurring it. Okay. Do verbs. Ready? We know that there are some rules. Ready? All do verbs must end in do. Um, that could be confusing. So we'll make it specific. We'll say all... Uh, okay, no, I'll, I'll make a print bracket in dictionary form, right? So in their dictionary form, all do verbs must end in do. Got a massively large comment from Vincent, so let me read that real quick. From Europe is pretty much the furthest place you can go. It's fauna and flora and kind of exotic. If I could recall correctly, there are almost no native mammals there, though nowadays there are a lot of sheep. Island was first inhabited by humans around the year 1200. The first human changed the fauna quite drastically behind the Malas to extinction, and also calling the extinction of the host eagle, the large bird of prey to coincide with humans. Okay. And for those of you just joining, that was in response to Ascor's, um, Vincent's discussion of wanting to learn Maori and his particular fascination with New Zealand. 
Uh, that's really cool, mate. I didn't realize that. Uh, although New Zealanders are called Kiwis, right? Because they're bird, the bird. Um, so weren't there mammals there? Question mark. Not not fully important to this lesson though. But thank you for telling me. Okay, so all root verbs must end in root dictionary form. But there's a there's a call uh, there's a note here. An asterisk is not all verbs that end in do are root verbs. So be careful of that. And we'll, we'll encounter that uh, later on. Birds are not mammals. You're right. Birds are not mammals. Uh, I knew that. They lay eggs. I, I knew that. Mammals don't lay eggs. Totally, totally knew that, Vincent. Thanks. Okay, so new verbs. All new verbs must end in do in dictionary form, but not all verbs that end in do are root verbs. Okay, that's like the corollary. Uh, that's like the uh, what's it called? Corollary. No, wait, what? Corollary. Corollary. Before we can go on, I have friends in New Zealand. Their kids are in the Hawkeyes in school pretty cool yeah there are four species of mammals that do lay legs are platypus one of them probably not right that doesn't make sense what are the what I have no idea what you're saying Apollo but welcome the platypus and something called an ant hedgehog in German huh okay so some examples of root verbs are taberu and that means what to eat right to eat so in this chapter we'll learn that the tabiru this is the dictionary form right uh dictionary dictionary form what i'll do is actually hide chat for now i mean i'll still be looking at you guys but for this just so i can use the whole um the whole pad here top it to eat dictionary form so how do we conjugate um do verbs well first let's figure out the simple rule rule for conjugating the root verbs in present form so these are present forms we're only learning uh, we're only learning present forms present uh long forms um so these will all be in present tense tense and these will all be these won't be in casual speech everything in in the entirety of like genki one almost will be in must form must form uh masu that looks like whole give me one second must form which is like their their long tenego form but we'll, we'll touch on that later but present tense so first what what do we need to do first step right is make the verb stem and this will seem a little bit complicated after compared to the second method i'll teach you for root verbs but it's good to learn the long way before you learn the short way right it's the same with maths um like you learn the area under a curve in pre-calculus before you learn to take the derivative um in calculus right so um so present tense so we first get the verb stem so make verb stem which is basically uh for root verbs uh is by dropping the root so drop do drop final do so in tabedu the verb stem will become equals tabe tabe right we make the verb stem Step two is really simple. Add mas or masen. Add mas or masen. Depending on if you want it to be, uh, this is positive, like affirmative, and this is negative in the present tense, right? So therefore, we get. Wait, I can actually like 
Hang on one second. I just realized I can do this. Perfect. So let me erase this thing. So in the present tense, right, we get, um, so I'll make it present positive, positive, Miss and I, don't worry, I'm a native English speaker, you guys, and present negative, present negative, right? So it's tabe, sorry. <laughs> Tabe plus mas and tabe plus masem equals tabe mas tabe masem. Teach that not looking, start throwing paper planes and passing notes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, spiny anteater. Oh, you googled it. You googled the animals that laid eggs. Enchin is what we used to call it, though. I've seen that word only in writing. Never have I ever heard that word pronounced aloud, so I probably just made a fool of myself. But teacher's absolutely looking. T tutor, more like, because, you know. Um, okay, so if we scroll out. Is the pen distracting? The, the color of the pen? I really like it, but... It could very well be described, described uh, to uh, distracting. Words are hard sometimes. Echidna. Okay, you're right. That that totally sounds right. Echidna. Thank you, John. Echidna is the word that we call that. From the pronunciation in text chat again, though, honestly, uh, as long as you don't like IPA at me, we'll be fine. Okay, so to to summarize, right? Do verbs. All do verbs must end in do, but not all verbs that end in do are do verbs, and we'll see that later with u verbs. Tabiru is our example one, and we'll do another conjugation as well to make sure we fully understand it. Tabiru means to eat, and tabiru is the dictionary form, right? And we know that it's a do verb. Well, it follows the first rule of do verbs because it ends in do as well, right? So we know um, that. Well, we don't know only that it's a do verb, but anyway, it's a do verb. <laughs> Present tense conjugations, we'll learn past tense, I think next chapter probably, but the simple thing is uh, make the verb stem. So for ru verbs, we make the the verb stem by dropping the final ru. So it's tabiru minus this ru, and it becomes just tabe, right? We see that here, tabe. And then we add mas or masem, depending if we want it in the positive ten or positive form or negative form. So present positive is Tabe plus mas equals tabe mas. Tabe plus masen equals tabe masen. Um, J Japanese doesn't have any future tense. Um, so like, for example, in Spanish, we have comer, which means to eat, right? And the f if I say yo como, it means like I eat, right? In the present tense. And if I want to say in the future tense, like I will eat, it's yo komare. Komare. But Japanese doesn't have any kind of complicated future conjugations like that, which just means that uh, there's a present tense, which can either be in the present, like, or it, talking about the future. Like, it means I eat, tabemas means I eat or I will eat. And uh, that's, it's like great because you don't have to memorize a whole set of conjugations for future tense, but it can also be a little bit confusing because you don't know if it's like right now or in the future. Um, and that's where it comes down to com uh, context, you know. Some people call it the non-past tense. Yeah, that's a good way of thinking about it. Yeah, so maybe not present tense, but non-past tense. But uh, if you first find, like, a book that's talking about how to conjugate something in the non-past tense, you might be like, what the actual hell is going on, right? So, <laughs> but yeah, that's a good way of putting it, midwalls. Um, in Japanese specifically, you can think of it as, like, the non-past tense because there's only past tense and then non-past tense. So, you know, that dichotomy is real. Okay, so uh, a colloquial way, a colloquial, colloquial way of for ru verbs is just drop ru and add mas or masem. This whole thing can be summarized as in drop ru and add mas or masem. So let's try it with another verb, shall we? Uh, what's another verb we can use? 
on one second. I don't want to get it fully off screen. Okay, what's another? Wait, can I lasso this and make it smaller, do you think? Uh, whatever, it's a problem for another day. Okay. Yeah, I keep having to say I do or will do with sentences meaning a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's it's hard to take out of context like that, John. But it can't be helped. So let's, let's take another root verb. Uh, one that we see very often, no pun intended, is the verb miru. And miru means to look, to watch. And again, this is the dictionary form. I'll form it, form it, uh, I'll, what was I gonna say? I'll shorten it to dictionary, like D-I-C-T form, dict form, if you will. Okay, so, present tense, right? Uh, I like making a graph, actually, a little chart. So, we know the verb is mutu, right? And so normally this will be present, and this will be positive and negative and this will be past, but we're not gonna pay attention to the past bit for now, so we can pretend it doesn't exist. But, so for the present one, what would be the verb stem for me to, using the same formula? We drop the final do. So if we drop the final do, it's just me, me, and then we add what to make it positive? Present positive is, we add mas. So it becomes me, mas, that's right. I'm assuming like Dora the Explorer, like Nihao Kailan, you're like saying it out loud to your uh, your screen, whether it be the mobile or, you know, internet device, but Mimas, very good. Can I post a link? Yeah, you may. Give me one second. Permit uh, John call it. I'm assuming it's going to be, you know, relevant. Mimas, I am saying it out loud. Perfect. Jesus, that was so fast. Let me see. Where are we here? Ah, where's my mouse? I'm so confused. Oh, because my freaking pen input's still on. Okay, sorry. I was gonna just click the link. Ah, okay, yeah. <laughs> That's worthy of the stream. The stream right now. <laughs> it's not nearly this complicated, although it, it, it will be with like later on, but like not nearly this bad. Dude, I have so many questions. Like I know I've seen like some movies like A Beautiful Mind and stuff where they'd like pull down the chalkboard which makes sense and like you can have like different segments and you like you know have one that goes up and like hides another chalkboard behind it but like how the hell do you reach like there's no ladder in this screen it's like you know that stack of shelves at a library that you need like a whole freaking forklift you know ridiculous somehow 800 years doesn't seem like a long time for the entire history of a place but despite having the short history it's not inclined to query the first iris okay so if you tune into the VOD, oh, I didn't have it on the screen, but okay, basically, uh, what I just mumbled there was not an incantation, it was actually reading aloud a friend of mine, Vincent's uh, explanation of first settlers um, and New Zealand, of New Zealand, but. You said ladder, I thought you switched to go. I would not switch to go so quickly, but I do use Japanese in my ghost streams too. But yeah, okay, so, mimas. And so, following the same, you know, formula, the verb stem doesn't change, right? So it's still me, right? And now what do we do to make it negative? We add, not mas, but masen. Mimasen, forgive my handwriting, mimasen. Anyway, gotta go now. Cheers, Vincent, thanks for stopping by and, and giving us a history lesson and a, um, you know, genus lesson based on mammals and such uh, have a nice stream thank you have a nice day okay me do me must uh me must perfect and then finally we'll do one that i'll mostly let you guys work through um before i write the answer but okiru okiru means to get up to wake up to get up wake up and of course, this is in dictionary form. I'll just underline it once if it's in dictionary form. That won't get confusing, I'm sure. Okay, <laughs> wake up. So the conjugation in present tense, uh, positive and negative is, 
Oh, yeah. So the stem is Oki, right? Oki. And then we add. That's right. We add mas. Right? And then to make it negative, we make it Oki. Oki. Masen. Oki masen. Perfect. So reverbs are really, really simple. Reverbs are like everyone's best friend, to be honest. Oh, wait. I didn't know I could do that. That's insane. Okay. How did I do that? What? I can just grab elements? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> That's actually hilarious. Wait, wait. This is... <laughs> uh, having fun with Lion Guy side. That's how we learn. Okay, that's cool though. So if I ever mess up, I can just drag like whole elements. Ah, uh, but it takes this one thing. It doesn't... Okay, but if I do this now, right? Ah, uh, but I won't... That's so weird that it'll let me mouse click to drag one of the elements, but I have to specifically use a pen to lasso. Hang on, I'm trying to test this. Okay, that's cool, that's useful. Wow, technology, it's amazing. Okay, uh, Windows. So that's how we do it with Rooverbs, right? Now let me introduce y'all to something pretty jank called Ooverbs. Ooverbs. Because <laughs> there are two types of verbs, Rooverbs and Ooverbs. And the second part of, mm, sorry, the second part of this is uverbs, uverbs. So that's weird. It won't give me unlimited space to like drag it off to the side, but that's fine. We don't need unlimited space. We don't need to be greedy. So here we are. So uverbs, it's on lasso form. Okay, Ooverbs. Ooverbs. Um, so basically, if it's not a Ruverb and not an irregular verb, it's an Ooverb. That's the easiest way to explain what Ooverbs are. Um, if we take the rule of all Ruverbs, so. How do I explain it? How do I make it formulaic? I basically, this is pretty, pretty sus, but like all verbs that aren't do verbs slash irregular are uverbs. So it's like 99% of verbs in Japanese are uverbs. Um, and so the reason they're called uverbs, right? Uh, I can touch back on, but let's let's make the formula for them first, right? So we we'll use an uverb like iku, iku, so it's iku, right? Which means to go, right? And that's the dictionary form. I'll just underline it once, like I said I would before. Iku is the dictionary form, and so to conjugate in the present tense, we're only talking about the present tense today. So to conjugate in the present tense, um, we first, and this is, okay, so um, it's kind of a precursor to this. Before, in the first few chapters, you could kind of skate by with the knowledge of romaji, and you didn't absolutely have to know hiragana katakana, but from now on, you absolutely have to know hiragana, and, and katakana like would be nice to you but like absolutely have to know hiragana moving forward otherwise you will not be able to conjugate verbs well it'll be hard for you um and actually i'll look up a small aid real quick hiragana alphabet hiragana chart not alphabet that's not the correct way to say it but i'll use it later to explain this but um and i want it to be in order perfect okay so let me let me describe this to y'all first real quick God, that's not what I want at all. Hang on one second. Open image in new tab. Open image in new tab. Perfect. Okay. So we have this, right? Uh, and so on, right? Hey, Sky. Welcome. So, why are they called ru verbs? Because they all have to end in ru, right? But why are they called u verbs? Why are they called u verbs if not all of them end in u? 
right? They don't all end in this kana, right? This kana for u. Yet they're called u verbs. Why? Because they'll end in the u row of the hiragana chart. So the like iku ends in ku, which is the conjugation of the u sound, right? It's k plus u, but it's still an u sound. That's why they're called u verbs. Su like um hanasu, hanasu is an u verb because it's in the u conjugation. Ru is also in the u conjugation, but that's why it's like it has to end in ru is like the first rule, and then you can tell by its conjugation. But ignoring ru for now because there are some u verbs that end in ru, but we'll learn them later. They're a little bit weird, but they're not irregular. But a uh, bit of a big bit to chew. But yomu. Nomu, they end in mu, right? Fu. Um, what's a verb that ends in fu? Ma, for example, yobu, yobu ends in bu, which is like fu with ten ten. Yobu. Nu, shinu means to die. <laughs> You'll hear a lot in anime. So these are called u verbs because they end in the u conjugation. Not just this one, but like the conjugation of this row. And I really want to spend some time on it because it's really important that we understand that. Um, because it, it ties into the next section. So, how do we make a stem of a ru verb? We just drop the ru, right? How do we make a stem of an u verb? Now, that's a hard question. Because we don't just drop the final u sound. U verbs take a little bit more work. They require a little bit more coaxing to, to come out of their shells, so to speak. For example, in you have to you the way to take in the stem of an u verb is to conjugate it to its e form, not conjugate, but change it to its e form. So, for example, it's really important that we have like a hiragana chart here to show you, which is really great that I have one because it's the internet. But iku ends in ku, right? Now we need the e form, the e form, the e sound. Think of it as like the e sound, but still in the same column. So we can think of it as key, right? So iku becomes iki, iki, and that's how you get to the stem. So let me write that down. So stem needs a little bit of a formula itself. Make final u sound, u sound into. Ah, uh, fudge. I want to make a quotation symbol, but it looks like the actual kanji or the actual kana itself. So I'll make it e form. E form. And that's just to make the stem, right? But then when you have the stem, the present positive. <laughs> My <laughs> my writing is becoming more and more abstract as we go on, but bear with me. And if you have any questions, please write them in chat and I'll definitely, you know, answer them. So the present positive formula, right? As we take the stem plus mas. This is a su, I swear. And then present negative is the stem plus masen. And it's confusing, I, I grant you, um, especially if you're learning for the first time. It's confusing for me even as I explain it because I haven't really thought about it in this way in a long time. But like I said, Japan is like, Japan, Japanese language is pretty formulaic and that's really useful. So we can apply these um, to uh, the verbs and they will make sense to all of them except for the irregular. And Japanese has very, very, very few irregular verbs um, compared to any language in the world, I'm sure, to be honest. Um, so, how do we do it? So for iku, right? For iku, iku, the present, <laughs> it's like my finger, my, my hand just gave up. Okay, I'm gonna call it <laughs> prez pause. I've actually written it like this in tutoring too. Like this is this is the level of uh, attention of detail I have. Prez pause is stem. So what is the stem? So this is the dictionary form. Dictionary. And then the stem is 
maybe just give us like 10 examples and we'll make sense of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to explain the formula before I show the examples, but I will absolutely show examples in the textbook has examples. And John Cullen has redeemed hydrate. And I specifically, before the stream started, went to get a cup that I have misplaced. So I will be using this mug, which is probably clean because we're very hygienic. You know, can't you tell? Beautifully groomed beard. It's great. Uh, <laughs> thank you for redeeming hydrate, John. <laughs> My mouth was pretty dry. And stretch, too. Wow. You're really uh, looking out for me. I really appreciate it. Uh, okay. So, present and positive, right? So, first we have to find the stem. So, iku, iku, the last form, the last sound is ku, right? So the stem becomes e, ki. Because, just like in our chart here, ku, the e form, the e form is ki, because it stays in the same column. We just move up another row. E ki, perfect. So present positive is, as I'm sure you guys have worked out by now, e ki, mas. Ikimas and present negative. Iki masen. Iki masen. Perfect. So now we can go back to the actual textbook, and everything I've written is basically here. Um, and we'll use more examples too. Don't get me wrong. Um, uh, yeah. So, what was I going to say? There's something I wanted to say. So, yeah, this, this paragraph is basically explaining how this, this chart works, this hiragana chart works. You go to the E sound. It's the same here. In Iku, for example, you see ku and ki, and both in the ka row of the hiragana chart. Nah. You see ku and key and both are in the call column call column of the chart right um so let me let me do another uverb that's a good point i only did one uverb but let's see what's another good uverb that's pretty common let's do something called like nomu nomu right nomu <laughs> that's the most sad looking no it's like gonna be pretty pretty bad handwriting because my english handwriting is pretty garbage too not gonna lie but yeah good good call sky i totally read your comment and decided on no mood. no i make it too silly guys my nose look really silly sometimes don't don't judge me it's not really important but <laughs> this one looks bigger okay hang on hang on hang on i'm just gonna write it casually i i'm overthinking this guys i i swear i can write i swear i can write okay that looks really good no <laughs> Nomu. I like to pronounce it Yomu. Yeah, I know you do, John Cullen. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> There's so many great inside jokes. Guys, if you don't know, John Cullen also streams daily Japanese learning videos uh, and live streams, of course. You should definitely check him out. Uh, generally, right before mine, he's streaming. So, you know, check him out. It's great. So, Nomu means to drink. To drink. Nomu, and this is the dictionary form, that's why I underlined it. So mu so first the verb stem, right? Let's conjugate to the stem. This is why it's really important to know hiragana so you don't have to look at the chart every time. But mu becomes my mu is funny? Boy? Don't at me. My mu looks fine. Look. It's okay, this kind of the circle in the middle of the thing is really not common in writing. Let me see. Yeah, I would never, it's always like, okay, that looked pretty jank, not gonna lie. But it's never in the center of like the stroke, but pretty pretty normal looking move. I'm not gonna lie. My handwriting's not the best, but base, base structures I think I've got done. But anyway, so. Nomu, meh, whatever, it's fine. Nomu becomes what? You have to conjugate to the E sound, the E sound. Nomu becomes no mi. No mu becomes no mi, right? 
Guys, it's my first time using this tablet and I really like it. No meat. Right? I'm just going to start my own dialect. Please do, John Cullen. That would be hilarious. I would definitely learn it in a heartbeat. Okay, so now present positive becomes nomimasu. Nomimasu. And negative is nomimasen. Nomimasen. Right? So the, con the, the translations of this in English, right, are, for example, to drink, it's like I drink without any specified subject. The implied understood subject is I, you're the speaker, right? So it becomes I drink or I will drink or I do not drink or I will not drink. Um, and we'll, we'll definitely come across many example sentences because we have to learn particles and everything. It's going to be great. This is going to be a chock full of information stream. Can you do all the ooh? Can I do all the ooh? Yeah. Let me let me do that real quick. So we'll make a quick side thing. This is just I'll call it stem extravaganza. Stem extravaganza for ooh verbs. Ooh verb edition. Ooh verb edition. Right? Cuz it's a really good question. Um, when thinking about u verbs, I like to use the list of kau nomu iku kaeru. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's good. Okay, okay. So we'll do that. Um, we'll get one from each thing. So a u e o. So we can do something that ends in u. So like kau. That's a good one. Sky. Kau. My kau looks pretty janky, but kau means to buy. Um. So, a. Ka, so we need something that ends in ku, so like iku, we've done to go. Uh, kaki kuke ko sashi su se so sa so su uh, hanasu. I don't know why I did that. Hang on, hanasu me hanasu. To speak, and we're just doing the stem stem conjugation, so we don't take up so so much time, especially because we'll definitely learn these verbs future in the future. Uh, ta, so tsu tsu is a little bit hard, but what's a verb that ends in tsu? Oh, there's so many, but I can't think of any. Are there so many? Matsu. Matsu. Matsu to wait. Um, are you kaki kuke o sashi su su so tachi su te to nani nu ne no nu. So we'll learn <laughs> she nu, <laughs> which is not good, but to die. She nu. Um, and sorry. Nu, who, who will do, um, I can't think of a great verb that ends in who. So I might do like yobu again. I'm not gonna lie, even to this day, I see a new verb, pause, then think of one of those and mutter whenever form I need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's reasonable. Okay, so who will do, um, yobu, yobu. And so it's boo, but it's basically foo anyway, but it's just like to what ten ten a voice sound. So we'll say to call. Uh but it's like to call as not like to call on a phone, but like to call someone by their name, for example, Yobu. Um like to call out, for example. Um and then we have Mu, so like Yomu. Ah, uh, that might be hard. So we'll do Nomu again. Nomu to drink. And then this is really important. This next uh, you is not really as important. There's very few words that end in there are very few verbs that end in you. I think um, I can't think of a single one actually. So we'll ignore that for now. I'm sure they exist, you know, but like I can't even think of one. Meaning like I haven't heard of a single one, so we'll ignore it for now. And then do here's the here's the crux of it. 
is u verbs that end in do, like um, kaeru. Yeah, that's good. Ah, uh, but kaeru is also a ru verb too. It depends on context. So kiru is the same. What's a ru verb? What's an u verb that only ends in u, or that ends in do, but it's not also a ru verb? Um, stomido is ru verb. My is sure. Kaeru is a good one because we're gonna learn particle ni today anyway. Kaeru is a good one. Uh, to return to a place. Okay, Kaido. Hence my list. No, I, I realize, I realize. So I'll zoom out a little bit and then make it easier to write. Okay, so Kau, Kau, right, becomes the U goes to E, right? The U goes to E. All these become E form. So not E form, E sounds, right? So Kau becomes Kai. Kai. Sorry, it's hiragana. So Kai. Iku becomes Iki. Because ku becomes ki, hanasu becomes. And remember, only the final sound goes to the e form. The final sound. So hanasu becomes ha. It's not really important to have amazing handwriting, but. Especially not on a tablet, but hanashi. Hanashi. Matsu becomes machi. Machi. Shinu becomes Shini. Shini. And there shouldn't be a line connecting here, but you know, brush strokes. Brush strokes. Yobu becomes Yobi. Yobi. Nomu becomes as we did above. Nomi. Kairu becomes. That looks too horrible though. Even if I say don't worry about handwriting too much, that's also pretty bad, but. Kaeri. Kaeri. Does that help? The most bit. Hopefully it does. Um, but yeah, so these are the verb stems. And then we add mas or masan, depending if we want to say in the affirmative or negative. Um, okay, so now we will move on. Look, we've finished all of these two pages of dense text. All of these dense text. Oh, I, I lied. There's two irregular verbs that for now that we'll learn. Suru and kuru. Suru and kuru are irregular because they're neither ru verbs or u verbs. Therefore, their conjugations just have to be memorized. And they're not difficult. Suru becomes shimas and shimasen. And the stem is shi. So it still follows the second rule, the second formula of stem plus mas or masen. That's basically the same rule for ru verbs and u verbs, but to conjugate to the stem is a little bit different between ru verbs and u verbs. But you can think of it as the whole formula of to conjugate a verb in Japanese, you take the stem plus mas or masen for the present positive and present negative. So the stem of suru is shi, and if you add mas, it becomes present positive. I do or I will do. And if you add masen, it becomes present negative. I will not do, I do not. Same for kuru, which means to come. The present, the, the stem is ki. If you add mas to it, it becomes present positive. I come, or I, I will come. Kimas. And then to make it negative, kimasen. I will not come, I do not come. So what is this rule? What are we conjugating for? Present tense for u ending verbs? Yeah. That's what we went over. Oh, I just joined 10 minutes ago. Okay, very good. That's why we have this. Haha, -ha, perfect. It's like, I knew this would happen. So, yes, there are two types of verbs. Do verbs and u verbs, right? Do verbs and u verbs. What have I done? Can I do control Z? I can. Perfect. Okay. Do verbs and u verbs. All do verbs must end in do, but not all verbs that end in do are do verbs. Yes, it's for conjugation. What are we conjugating for? Present tense. That's right. For both ru verbs and u verbs, we are learning the present form, uh, the present positive form and the present negative form. All the present form conjugations um, for each verb in the mas form, in the in the long form. So tabedu, we make the stem by dropping ru. To get the stem of a ru verb, you drop the ru. 
So it becomes tabe, and then we add mas or masen to conjugate it, to conjugate it. So tabe mas is present, or present positive, I do eat, I will eat, or I eat. And present negative is tabe masen, I do not eat, I will not eat. Um, and this is miru and okiru follow the same verbs, they're different, uh, the same formula, they're different verbs, but u verbs to form the stem, you you change it to the E sound, the E sound, not to be confused with the English E, but the sound E, hiragana E, um, and the, the E form here, E form here. So stem, after we conjugate to the stem, we add mas or masen, that part doesn't change, and that's how we learn how we conjugate U verbs. And this is an example of all the stem changing, not all of them, but like, you know, uh, these are U verbs with various sound endings and how to make their stems so if you want to look it up in the vod again and maybe i can save this note and post in the discord or something that probably would be wise i could have thought of that future but okay but yeah hopefully that answered your question and now we can turn chat back on cool check out our discord okay um And we went over kairu, which is an u verb that ends in a ru. So remember how I said that all ru verbs must end in ru, but not all verbs that end in ru are ru verbs? Kairu is a perfect example, which means to go back to a place. We call it a disguised u verb because it looks like a ru verb, but it's in fact an u verb. And you might be wondering, naturally, how do I learn? How do I know if it's a disguised u verb or not? Uh, just by experience. You can't know because it looks like a ru verb. So. You just have to look for it. Sneaky do, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Stems are used in more than what we will just learn today in case you're also asking that. Yes, that's a good point. Stems, stems are really, 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 really important in Japanese. Verb stems, uh, and that's why it's really important to know hiragana off the top of your head. Um, it, not so much that you can memorize this chart, so to speak, like this chart is like great to show what we're doing to conjugate to the stem but you can also do it by sound alone right iku so you know it has to have a k sound and then you make it iki like it, you can purely do that almost intuitively too um but stems are really really important verb stems are really really important because we'll use that same stem uh in different conjugations in the future just like we can say that it's stem plus mas plus masen stem plus mas or masen but that stem part can be used in different uh, grammatical structures in the future too, in conjugation. So thank you, Sky. That's really important. Imposter root verb, kairu sus. Exactly, John. <laughs> Throw kairu out the airlock. Well, there's a rule of thumb, but it's not 100%. If the second to last syllable ends in ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a good point too. It's a, e, or e. If the second to last kana has an a sound, e sound, or uh, a sound, a sound, is it E sound too? But haidu is definitely an U verb. I think it's A and A. I think it's A and A. So here we have ka edu, ka edu. It has an A sound, so it's like probably gonna be a. Uh... Hmm? <laughs> I can't remember, but when I remember, I'll definitely share that rule of thumb with you guys. But for now, we don't have to worry about it too much because we won't come across too many imposter U verbs. Uh, or imposter rue verbs as John Cullen so properly called it but oh yeah here it is very good okay okay you're right you're right sorry if you see the vowels e i and e before the final do in most cases the verbs are rue verbs uh neru is such a rue verb n e r u neru there are exceptions however there are also u verbs that have the vowels i and e before the final do kairu is such an exceptional u okay so basically Grammar has exceptions, and Japanese is no different, but we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge as we get to them. Okay, verb types in the present tense. Uh, we actually even covered this partially, but in this lesson, we learn about a dozen verbs that describe basic human actions. These are often called action verbs, and the present tense of these verbs either means, one, that a person habitually, habitually or regularly engages in these activities, or two, that a person will is planning to um, perform these activities in the future. Like I said, Japanese doesn't really have a future tense, so. Um, 
at least they're a little bit easier to start spot than irregular verbs in English, which students just have to learn. Yeah, that's very, very true, John. I forgot the book even mentioned that, lol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good memory, though, if you forgot the book even mentioned it, but just had that off the top of your head. That was really good, Sky. Okay, so this is really cool because it says habitual actions, right? And there's, in the future, we'll learn about habitual actions using te form, but... For now, if we say watashi wa, which we shouldn't say in, in, in natural English, we just say yoku terebi omimasu. Yoku terebi omimasu. And remember, the verb comes at the end. So, what is the verb? Miru, mimasu. Present positive form of miru, to watch. So, it's like, I watch. What do you watch? Terebi yo. Terebi yo. I watch telebi television. <laughs> I watch TV. And then here's where our frequency adverb comes in. How often do you watch television? Yoku, often. I often watch television. And so when you have, this is kind of a, a tidbit, but I don't know if they'll explain it, but if it does in the future in this textbook, then we'll already have learned it. But frequency adverbs like yoku, amari, they have to have uh, corresponding conjugations of the verbs. That sounds like a lot of words, but basically, Yoku means often, right? So this should be in the present positive sense. It should be in the positive conjugation. Because you wouldn't say, I often don't watch television. That doesn't make sense, right? You often watch television. So it's like, you can't say, Yoku terebi o mimasen. Cannot say it. It sounds weird because you're saying, I often do not watch something. Instead, you use like something like, Ammari or Zenzen. And that's where, I said I'd come back to it. That's where this negative comes in. It means negative conjugation of the verb. So, ammari terebi o mimasen. Ammari terebi o mimasen. I don't often watch television. I don't watch very much television. Or, zenzen terebi o mimasen. So, mimasen is what we're using because it has to be negative to fit with this adverb. I never watch TV. Um, so, yeah. Well, well, there'll be plenty of examples of that too. And so, like, for example, Amari and Zenzen are the negative ones, but Taite and Tokidoki and Yoku, uh, by contrary, like al contraire, <laughs> instead of the negative conjugation, you take the positive conjugation. So you say Taite terebi o mimas. I I usually watch television. Um, you wouldn't say Taite terebi o mimasen. You'd use the uh, the positive conjugation um, because it's like a uh, something you usually do or sometimes do or often do. Um, that's a lot of information. I'm sure it'll come up in the future. And when it does, I'll be sure to re-explain this. But just to have that in your mind a bit. So irregular. What's irregular? The most bit. Okay. So. Meari-san wa tokidoki. Meari-san wa tokidoki asa gohan no tabemasen. The reason I'm pausing is because it just literally went against something I said. So now I have to think about what I said. Tokidoki. Hmm. Okay, I guess Tokidoki can take negative or positive. Hmm. Sometimes do not do something. I sometimes don't eat breakfast. Yeah. It makes sense even in English. That That's true. Yeah. In, but in English, we can also say, like, I often don't eat breakfast. But you wouldn't say, Yoku asagohan no tabemasen doesn't make sense in Japanese. You have to say, Zenzen or Ammari asagohan no tabemasen. But I guess, Toki Doki, if it's written in the textbook, it can't be wrong unless it's like a, like a misspelling. But this can't be wrong. So, yeah, I guess Toki Doki can take present um, positive conjugations or negative conjugations. But. Yeah, you said you love me. Yeah, sorry, Yo-Yo Gam. The truth has come to light, and I, I just don't... Um, I'm really sorry. Possible bad advice. Early on in tutoring, I specifically spoke Watashi with my teacher to be sure I was understood early grammar points. Then eventually I was like, okay, training wheels off. Yeah, so in the book, it'll show you Watashi wa, Watashi wa, Anata wa, Anata wa, because it, it's to, to specify, like... The reason I think they do that is because even it's a even if it's a bad habit, this wa, they want to introduce the the particle wa here, because if you drop the watashi wa, you don't need the particle wa. But we haven't really learned and mastered the particle wa yet, so they probably keep it just to uh, to get people exposed to the particle wa, probably. 
知らんけど。Sometimes doesn't watch, sometimes doesn't eat. Uh, yeah. No, that's fine. Sometimes, toki doki, sometimes can be used positive or negative, I suppose. That makes sense. But, yoku, like if, but in English, I could say, like, I, I don't often watch television. But we wouldn't use yoku there. We'd use amari, not often. So, yeah, just be careful. We'll, we'll definitely have、um, a page, like a workbook exercise in this too. For, we'll review that on Friday together. It might be grammatically correct, but just not the way people really speak. Yeah, that's probably true too, John. Very well put. Future actions. Please notice that the mas here doesn't change, and masen doesn't change. It's still the present conjugation, but it can also be applied to future actions based on context. Like, Watashi wa ashita Tokyo ni ikimasu. Chigao, chigao, sorry. Wow, my, my kanji was so bad there. Watashi wa ashita Kyoto, Kyoto ni ikimasu. Kyoto ni ikimasu. As for me, Watashi wa, as for me, Ashita, tomorrow, Kyoto ni ikimasu. I will go to Kyoto.、Um, so it literally even tells you in the sentence that we're talking about tomorrow. So even though, like, we don't need a different conjugation, it just tells you in the sentence that it's a future action. You know? Su san wa kyo uchi ni kaerimasen. Su san wa kyo uchi ni kaerimasen. As for Su san, as for Miss Su, Uh, she will not return back. She won't, she won't come back today. Is a good. Yeah, she will not return home today. Is a good.、Um, a good translation for that. And now here comes the real. If the meat and potatoes are the verbs and the verb conjugations, then this is the gravy, right? <laughs> Sorry, I just never really expected to say this is the gravy、uh, while looking dead ass into a camera. But okay. So, particles. Particles are hyper important, right? Nouns used in sentences generally must be far- followed by particles, which indicate the relationship, the relations that the nouns bear to the verbs.、Uh, in spoken language, particles are often dropped. We will learn more about such cases in Lesson 15. This is Lesson 3, and they're talking about a short, casual speech in Lesson 15. But basically,、um, Nouns must be followed by particles which indicate the relations that the nouns bear to the verbs. Right? In this lesson, we learn four particles o, de, ni, and e. e. So, a little note for this particle it's hiragana he. It's hiragana he. I closed my freaking hiragana chart. One second. It's hiragana he. Hiragana he, but it's pronounced e. It's pronounced e. Besides particle o, see how it's w o, but it's just o. Even here they've written as just o because you just pronounce it as o. As a particle, as a particle, when he is used as a particle, it's pronounced e. It's pronounced e.、Um, and it's really only used in one situation, so you won't have to worry about that too much. I was Googling Toki Doki on the side. It is indeed positive or negative. I'm not sure I knew that either. Okay, good to know. I'm waiting for Mary to Takeshi to turn up. So, John, you joined a little bit late, but they are. It's, uh, it's, uh, we haven't actually gone through the Kaiwa, so that's good, but it's making a date. That's, the, that's this chapter. They move fast, dude. It's been three chapters, and they're already on their way to make a date.、Um, but we haven't gone over the dialogue yet because it's such a complicated one. The chapter is kind of complicated, so I wanted to go over the chapter contents first before moving back to the dialogue. Pog, easy clap, exactly. They, they know what's up. Mer- Mary knows exactly what she wants. Okay, and you'll see that in the future too. They'll be like talking about、uh, when to make a date, and she'll be like,、mm, not that day. That day doesn't work for me. It has to be this day. Takashi's just like, aye, dude. Okay, so the four particles, o, o, de, Ni and e. e. O. The particle o indicates direct objects, the kind of things that are directly involved in or affected by the event. Note that this particle is pronounced o. Right? So our first example sentence is kohi o nomimas. Kohi o nomimas. Kohi o nomimas. So we can read sentences if we're trying to translate them backwards to forwards in Japanese because the, the predicate often holds the verb. 
So what is the verb? What is being done this sentence? Nomimasu. Nomimasu. And nomu, I skipped over the verbs in the tongo in the vocabulary list, but nomu means to drink. So nomimasu is the present affirmative, present positive conjugation. So will drink or drinks. We don't know who drinks or anything else. We just know that it's drinks. But what is being drank? <laughs> what is being imbibed? Kohi o, kohi o, kohi o What is being drank? The coffee. It's joined by the particle o here. What is being acted upon? The coffee is being acted upon. What's happening to it? It's being drank. Kohi o nomimas. I drink coffee, and because we don't have a subject here, the implied subject is watashi. Um, I drink coffee. Ongaku wo kikimas. Ongaku wo kikimas. Kiku is an uverb. Kikimas, kikimas is an uverb, and it means to listen. What is being listened to? Music. I listen to music. Terubi wo mimas. Terubi wo mimas. Miru is an ru verb. Miru is a ru verb. So we drop the ru to get the verb stem, which is me, and we add mas. So I、uh, something watch television, right? Or watch. What is being watched? Television. Who's watching the television? I. I watch TV. Does that make sense?、Uh, can you say the same thing passively? TV is being watched. Yes, but passive sentences in Japanese is really, really hard.、Um, not really, really hard, but. It's it's kind of hard because like in general we won't learn the sentence TV is being watched even in English as a non-native English speaker. It's like really hard, but like you could say, how would you say passively? Telebi the telebi is being watched. Ma mirare te iru, mirare te iru, but that makes a the. Potential conjugation plus teiru form, which is like, like years of Japanese basically in one sentence. So you wouldn't really want to say passively anyway that the TV is being watched. Like, how would you use that in a sentence anyway? The television is being watched by a ghost. Like, even then you could reword it pass. Even then you could reword that passive sentence into an active sentence, as in the ghost is watching television, and that's something we can do a lot more easily. So, even in even in English, I was taught to avoid passive tense or passive wording, passive speech. Um, I remember being marked off on so many essays and research papers because I use the passive speech, and they want active speech nowadays.、Um, but it's a good question, but just kind of definitely without out of the scope of this particular、uh, chapter for sure. But good question. De active is just punchier. Yeah, exactly, John. So all. Indicates direct objects. It's a little bit different from English direct objects, but in general, you can think of it as what is being affected by、uh, the verb or the event. So, in this sentence, what's being affected by the drinking? It's the coffee. What's being listened to? The music. What's being watched? The television. And after every single one of these verb or nouns, we use the particle o to indicate just that. Particle de. The particle de indicates where the action. Takes place where the event described by the verb takes place. The key part of the sentence is where, where the action takes place,、um, because there's going to be confusion with this particle in the future. I promise you. But one use of particle de indicates where the event described by the verb takes place. I repeat it a lot because it's really important. So let's let's do the sentence right. I'll read the whole sentence. Toshikan toshikan de hon o yomimas. Toshikan de So let's work backwards. Yomimas is the present positive form of yomu, yomu, to read, yomu, and it's an u verb, right? Because it doesn't end in ru. We know it's an u verb. Yomu, mu becomes mi to make the verb stem. Mu becomes mi, yomi. We add mas to make it present positive, present,、uh, yeah, present positive. Yomi mas, yomi mas. So that means to read. So what is being read? Hon, 
本を読みます。本を読みます。What is 本 ?Hon means book, right? So here we use particle o here too, right? Particle o. Read. It's not just at. It's not just at though. Ne most of it. It's a good. It's a good point, but it's not just at because we'll use at with ni later too. So it's not at. It's like it, it is kind of at, but it's also not. At. It shouldn't just remember it as at. Like even though it's a bit wordier, I want you to remember it as the place where the action takes place. Um. Where the event described by the verb takes place. Yes. It's wordy like that for a reason. It's not just because the book is stupid. Okay, so, hon o yomimasu. The book is being read. So we use the particle o here, right? What is being read? The book. Where is the book being read? Being read. Toshokan de hon o yomimasu. Toshokan de hon o yomimasu. Um. I will read books in the library, or I read books at the, in the library.、Uh, not just at the library, but in the library. Because、uh, where are you reading books? In the library. So, Toshikan de.、Uh, mimas. Terebi o mimas. I watch TV, or I will watch TV. Where will you watch TV? Uchi de terebi o mimas. Ie de terebi o mimas. I will watch TV at home. I watch TV at home. Okay. So, this is where it gets confusing. <clears throat> Slightly. There's another particle, ni. The particle ni has many meanings. But here we will learn two. One, the goal towards which things move. And I know Nin Mozabit reading that sentence just might give you an aneurysm. But basically, it's important that it's worded this way the goal towards which things move and the time at which an event takes place. The second one is much easier than the first one. The goal towards which things move. Saying that in English, if I hear that, I'd just be like, what did you say? Excuse me? Like, Gesundheit? But it's basically showing the destination kind of thing.、Um, a particle in the, like, with movement and the, something that has like, a destination. The goal, to which,、uh, the goal towards which things move.、Uh, we'll, we'll go into it with examples. So, goal of movement. So, Watashi wa. 今日学校に行きません。Place with motion attached to it. But place can be confused with day, right? It's a little bit different.、Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. So, 私は今日学校に行きません。So, 行きません means will not go or do not go, right? Do not go, will not go where? Right? Go, this verb, iku, implies movement, right? Because you have to go somewhere, right? So, what, where are you not going? Gakko. Gakko ni ikimasen. Because it's a movement verb, iku, you'll use particle ni with it. So, where are you not going? It's not gakko, because we said where here too, right? Where are you reading a book? Toshokan de. Where are you not going? Or where are you going? Gakko ni. We use ni here because there's movement implied. Watashi wa, as for me, kyo, today, I will not go to school. I will not go to school today. Kaerimasu, to return back to a place. Kaerimasu, where are you returning back to? What, what is your destination? To where will you return? Uchi ni, home. Watashi wa, uchi ni, kaerimasu. I will go back home. I will return home. Can you zoom in a bit so we can read Purigana? Sure.、Um, it's a scanned copy though, so the quality might not be great, but check out the transcoding of the stream in 1080p, Kappa. Okay. Watashi wa uchi ni kaerimasu. I will return home. And I'll keep it punched in a bit so I'll make the chat slightly smaller. And make me slightly smaller as well. All for you. Okay. Is that better? Okay, so, and then the time one is really easy. Basically, after a time expression, not, not a frequency expression, or not like a time expression as in kyo, kino, ashita. Remember that kyo, kino, ashita do not take any particles after them. But 
We'll come back to that later when it's when it comes up in a workbook or whatnot. But for time expressions, Nichiobi ni Kyoto ni ikimasu. So now we see ni particle ni twice here, but these are two different ni's. This ni is the goal of the movement, where you're going to, and this ni is the time. So, ikimasu, I will go. Doko ni? Doko ni ikimasu ka? Where will you go? Kyoto ni ikimasu. Kyoto ni ikimasu. I will go to Kyoto. We need this particle ni, right? When will you go to Kyoto? Do you? Ah, chika. Nichiyobi ni. Nichiyobi ni. I will go on Sunday. Nichiyobi ni Kyoto ni ikimasu. I will go to Kyoto on Sunday. Juichi ji ni nemasu. Sleep. Ah, uh, neru. Drop the ru and add mas. Nemasu. Uh, I will sleep, or I sleep. What time do you sleep? Juichi ji ni. At 11 o'clock. I will sleep or I go to bed. Same thing. <clears throat> Some time where it's stand alone without particle ni tagging along, which will be discussed in section four below. Okay, that's like kyo, ashita, kino, but we'll get to there. Approximate time references can be made by substituting goro. Hmm? Goro or goro? They're the same. Ah, uh, goro or goro ni for ni. Thus, uh, I go to bed around 11 o'clock. So, juichi ji goro ni nemas. This goro, we can attach it to time expressions, like specific time, to make it around 11 o'clock, for example, or around something like that, you know, about 11, around 11 o'clock. Um, that's more supplemental, definitely not core for this lesson. Okay, this particle e is super, super simple. It can only be used to substitute for this ni, the first ni usage that we've learned, the movement ni. The particle e too indicates the goal of the movement. The sentence in one above, therefore, <laughs> in one above, therefore, can be rewritten using e instead of ni. Note that this particle is pronounced e. So watashi wa, watashi wa, kyo, gakko e ikimasen, gakko e ikimasen, watashi wa uchi e kaerimasu. This e is only used for this, uh, you know usage of ni it can be substituted a is not used in any other situation it's like a destination destination of movement destination slash goal of movement i think that's a good point of saying it the destination slash goal of movement yeah i think that's good so destination ni goal of movement is re like reason this way because not only movement verbs not only ikukuru kaeru take particle ni there are some verbs like uh, densha ni noru, uh, u, naka, isu ni sawaru, sawaru janakte, suwaru, sit in a chair, ride the train, um, because they have, that's the goal of the movement, but we'll get into that later. Wait, e and ni are interchangeable for going places? That's right. For this, for this one, okay, so let me briefly show you this real quick. So there are three verbs, particularly. There are more than three, of course, but there are three specific verbs that we see a lot. Iku, kuru, kaeru. I'll write them all in hiragana for now anyway. Kaeru. This means to go. This is the regular one, to come. And this is to return to a place. To return to a place. All three of these verbs often take particle ni. Um, plus like the place that you're going returning to or coming back from um, because these are all movement verbs right to go to come to return to a place and you can even say one that we won't learn for a while but uh, if you ever hear it you'll know it. it's modoru modoru means also to like return to a place that isn't kaeru it's like to return but like for a human not like return something to someone else but modoru but anyway they all take particle i ni and so like if I were to say um, if I were to say like we use this in the book just now so kyo to ni iku um, kyo to ni kaeru 
表とに来る。All of these knees、uh, <laughs> That's great. Sorry. No way. What is happening? No, 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 no. Basically, all of these knees can be replaced with a particle a. They can be written as. And I'll look at chat in a second. I know you guys are typing. I can read that in my peripherals, but. Kyoto e? Iku, kuru, kaeru. Sorry, I think my、uh, battery on the pen is dying a bit.、Uh, use knee for everything. I mean, wait. First of all, Oyasumi ni. Sai. Nice one, John. I like that pun. I appreciate it. I hope you sleep well. Rest up. And I can't wait to watch your stream tomorrow, bud.、Um, but yeah, I'll catch you later. Okay. No need to memorize A then. A is nice because ni doesn't only have two usages. Ni has like, I think four in total. I can't remember off the top of my head. So, Ni is destination slash goal of movement. Ni is time. Ni is.、Um, like, if you, if you receive something. Ah, my God. But Ni has like quite a few usages, and A only has one. So, if, you, if, you're always, if you're ever burdened by the too many usages of ni, then you can switch between ni and e for the first one. But yeah,、uh, of course, up to you.、Um, do you think e is used sometimes to avoid using a double ni? Yes. Yeah. John is streaming lessons? Yes. No, most of it, John streams just before me.、Um, he goes over、uh, like sentences and, and vocabulary and stuff mostly, but yeah, he does. Yeah, 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 exactly. So in this one, we can say,、uh, like here, right? Th this one. Nichiobi ni kyoto ni ikimasu. This can also be rewritten as Nichiobi ni kyoto e ikimasu. And sometimes people prefer that.、Um, I don't think I've ever heard of native speakers' opinion. I think they're fine either way because it's so internalized to them. But Juichiji ni nemasu. You can't say juni chiji e nemasu. That doesn't work. Like, I even started because it just sounded so foreign. But change of state is a good one, too. Yeah, Sky Wolves for knee. That's good. Let me sub to John then. <laughs> yeah, good, good call.、Um, okay. So, time references. We're out, of the, we're out of the strong, we're out of the really hard parts for today's lesson, I think. So, it should be smooth sailing from here, I think. Time references. You need the particle ni. You need the particle ni with one, the days of the week, like on Sunday. Like、uh, on Sunday, here we had、uh, Nichiobi ni Kyoto ni Ikimasu. Days of the week, and numerical time expressions like at 10 45 in, in September. So Nichiobi ni Ikimasu. This is weird. I hate this. Reading this makes me sad. Um, I have never seen this in. in、well, I guess I don't really read Japanese too often, so I can't really say that. But, like, I. Normally, you would not see these kanji written as 10 45 like that. You would not read. Juji Yonju Gohun. Juji Yonju Gohun would definitely be written as this. And then ni okimasu.、Um, but yeah, it's a time, it's a specific hour, so it takes particle ni. To describe the, the timing, ni okimas. Kugatsu ni, kugatsu ni kaerimas. I'll go back in September. I asked my teacher straight up, and she doesn't use e, but she says no. She knows people who just use e almost exclusively. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like it sometimes. It's a nice, like, change of place, you know.、Um, but at least you should know that. A can be used as that use of knee, so when you hear it, like on television or in a drama or anime or something, you know it really means knee as well. So, numbers, lol, hate it, especially as hiragana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hiragana and even kanji. I hate it almost more in kanji than in hiragana because if it's in hiragana, you know it's like for young students who can't read the kanji, but like there's no way you'd write this in kanji anymore.、Hmm. Okay, you do not use particle ni with time expressions defined relative to the present moment, such as today, tomorrow, 
or yesterday, um, for example, or expressions describing regular intervals such as every day uh, or the word for when. So basically, you don't use ni with ashita, kino, kyo, asatte, ototoi, like all these time words that specifically tell you when the when the event is happening. You don't need to use ni. Um, every day, you don't need ni. Like maiban ni, you don't need that. Mainichi ni, you don't need that. Itsu ni is never ever said. Ah, itsu ni. Ah, okay, but like literally 0.01 percent of the time, if they're like, if you, if I tell you that there's a party. Right, and I never specify when, but I'm keep telling you about the party, and like keep talking about the party, and you're like itsu, 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 and I keep ignoring you. Then you'd be like itsu ni, <laughs> you can be like yo, stop trolling me, tell me when the freaking part party is. But like it's not, you'd never ever hear it otherwise. So uh, don't, you know, if you hear an anime, that's why. But like you don't hear it normally. I can't use it for tomorrow, but if tomorrow's Tuesday, I can use it with Tuesday. Yes, yes, uh, that's true. You can, but if you if tomorrow's Tuesday, you would never say really on Tuesday. Like I have a an exam on Tuesday, you'd say I have an exam tomorrow. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Tomorrow, that's the better explanation, to be honest, guy. Good job. Tomorrow's in relation to now, and Tuesday is objectively Tuesday. Yep. Okay, you do not normally use ni with parts of the day, like in the morning, at night. Uh, or like on the weekend. Unlike words like ashita and maiban above, however, these words can be followed by ni depending on styles, emphases, and personal preferences. Asa ni shinbu no yomimasu. I read the newspaper in the morning. But like that's, the ni is implied there. So it's kind of weird to say it specifically. Same thing for shumatsu. It's like shumatsu nani wo shimasu ka? Shumatsu nani wo shimasu ka? In fact, in fact, I was taught in my classroom, as in like when I learned the language, that it's more likely and more common to put a comma after the time. So like asa comma, so time as in not the hour, but like time of day, like asa comma shumatsu comma. It's like you pause, but you don't necessarily say ni. So asa comma shunbu no yomimasu, shumatsu nani wo shimasu ka? Like that. Okay, <clears throat> so masenka, masenka. You can use masenka, honyarara masenka, nani nani masenka. You 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 translate or you you conjugate into masenka. You can use the masenka, the present tense negative verb plus the question particle. So just like how we make it something masen, we just add ka to masen, and it becomes an invitation to do something. It should be noticed that this is its affirmative、uh, counterpart, maska, cannot be so used. So okay, yeah, when you So if you have a verb like taberu, right? Taberu to eat, right? First we、um, conjugate it to its present negative, right? So first we need the stem plus masem, right? That's how we get to the present negative. So tabe, so the stem for ru verbs, if we remember, is just drop the ru. So tabe masen is I will not eat, or I do not eat. But if we add ka to this, right, it becomes an invitation. So tabe masen ka. Is it becomes an invitation to do something? So it means so if you say tabe masen because the subject is implied to be me, it just means I do not eat or I will not eat. But tabi masen ka is automatically a question, and it becomes won't you eat? Won't you eat? So if I were to say, we don't know this word yet, but、um, if I were to say isho ni, isho ni, isho ni, isho ni, isho ni, isho ni, isho ni. Hang on, I might be、uh, being a bit silly. Let me go to jisho real quick. Ishoni, ishoni. Okay, okay. It's not long u form. Sorry, let me erase that because it looks a bit unbecoming. Nee. Ishoni, ishoni. Tabemasen ka? Won't you eat with me? It becomes like an invitation like that. 
Same thing with Uverbs. Uh, we use stem plus masen. That part doesn't change, right? That formula is always just um, standard. Stem plus masen is the present negative form of any verb. It's just the conjugating to the stem is different between root verbs, u verbs, and irregular verbs. So if we say uh, kiku, kiku, so it's like, uh, I should move this a little bit, hang on. So if we use the verb kiku plus ongaku, so if I say uh, ongaku, on, mm, sorry, on, gaku, <laughs> Ignore this weird ku. Ongaku wo kiku kikimas. Ah, let me make it kikimasen. Kikimasen. This is a sentence, right? Ongaku wo kikimasen. I do not listen to music, right? I do not listen to music is a statement. Ongaku wo kikimasen. I do not listen. What do I not listen to? Music. Ongaku wo kikimasen. However, by a simple change into oh, this is such bad handwriting guys I don't even want to show it to you because like I don't want you to learn incorrectly but <laughs> it's not much better but okay we'll, we'll have to make do ongaku o kiki masen ka just by adding one ka here it no longer means I do not listen to music it means won't you listen to music won't you listen to music and the implied meaning is with me won't you listen to music with me won't you listen to music like that so you so just can't use maska use masenka no okay so oh right that was also said i should really specify the difference so huh okay so we use tabemasen right but if we say tabemaska 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 just means do you eat or will you eat it's not an invitation to eat. They're very, very different. Tabimasenka means won't you eat? Tabimasuka, will you eat? Very different in meaning, right? But yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, if you just remember, it's won't you. A very literal invitation. Hirogahan o tabimasenka. What do you say to having lunch with me? Won't you have lunch with me? I desu ne, sounds great. Tennis wo shimasenka. Won't you play tennis with me? Or will you... It should be translated as like, won't you play tennis with me to really get this point across, but... Mm, chotto. Mm, chotto. Mm, not, not really up to it. Mm, slightly inconvenient for me at this moment. The inconvenience for me at this moment is all implied here. Because Japanese be like that. Mm, chotto. Literally, the literal translation of this is... Mm, um, a little. That's all it means, um, a little, but from that you should understand that it's like, mm, no thanks, basically. Okay, word order. Japanese sentences are fairly flexible in the arrangement of elements that appear in them. Generally, sentences are made up of several noun particle sequences, followed by a verb or an adjective, which in turn is often followed by a sentence final particle, such as ka, ne, or yo. Among the noun particle sequences, their relative orders are to a large extent free. A typical sentence, therefore, looks like the following, but several other arrangements for noun particle sequences are also possible. That was a lot. It was a lot for me, too. I literally fell asleep. That, that's not true. I almost fell asleep reading that. Basically, just like in English, um, as long as the key parts of the sentence that need to be together are together, they can be overall interchanged uh, or shifted around. Um, so as long as the stuff that needs to be paired together is paired together, it doesn't matter where in the sentence they're paired together, right? So like, kyo wa, so topic, time, place, object, verb, is the, okay, we have this in English too, I don't know it because I'm a native speaker, but if you ever teach ESL, if you say an English sentence, that has to be in the word order of like, um, a small yellow puppy dog. A small yellow puppy dog so it'd be size then color then type of object or whatever and if you, if you say like a small puppy dog uh, or a uh, yellow small puppy dog it's or a, it just sounds weird um, so it's the same in Japanese so you go like topic time place object verb but you don't have to memorize it it should it'll sound a bit unnatural but uh, technically you will be understood if you were to say 
You can say, as long as the verb is at the end, you can say, Watashi, Watashi wa toshokan de kyo nihongo o benkyo shimasu. You can technically say it, but it doesn't sound quite right. Just like how, you know, I have a small yellow, or I have a yellow small puppy dog, doesn't sound quite right, but you can totally say it, like it makes sense, you know? It's weird. Topic first, verb last, whatever in the middle doesn't matter.、Uh, frequency adverbs generally go towards the beginning too. I would keep that as a rule. So, like frequency, like frequency, yoku, and like time, like that. It just sounds slightly weird.、Um, but you don't have to really memorize it super hard. But yeah. Royal order of adjectives. That's right. That's right. I had to Google it because I didn't remember either. I didn't even hear about it until my French friends told me about it like a few years back. I was like, holy crap, you're right. We do describe. Nouns in this specific order without even realizing it. So, right. Basically, this is like you can Yoda speak a sentence, but don't. Precisely so. Very well put, Sky. So, Watashi wa yoku. Shichiji goro. Shichiji goro. Nanaji goro. Uchi e kaerimasu. You can also say, like, Watashi wa yoku. Uchi e shichiji goro kaerimasu. I really wouldn't put yoku at the end either. Like, um,. It should be in the front, like, and same with time. But these are things you, you listen to and have experience with and then pick up. They're not, you know, we'll figure it out together. What does yoga, Yoda sound like in Japanese? That's a good question. Let me, I'm, I'm curious about that actually. Hang on.、Uh, remind me later. We'll, we'll go back to it after this, but I don't think there's much more in this chapter. Okay, so frequency adverbs. You can add a frequency adverb such as mai nichi, yoku, toki doki, amari, zen zen, etc., taite, etc., etc., to describe how often you do something. Watashi wa toki doki, kissa ten. I've never seen the kanji. Actually, it's kind of weird. I don't know what this first kanji is, but this means cha, right? This is the, the kanji for tea, and this is like a kanji for store, but、I'm, it's like a tea store, but like kissa ten means cafe. cafe.、Um, but. Anyway, Watashi wa toki doki kisaten ni ikimasu. I sometimes go to a coffee shop. I tend to put yokus and stuff at the start because I,、uh, I want an order. But those frequency type verbs I've heard moved around more often than others.、Um, I don't know. Frequency in, to me like, basically comes right at the beginning.、Um, Hmm. Iku yo. Yoku. Futsu. Futsu ni. Yeah. I think so. If you're making a whole sentence, they should really be towards the beginning. Yeah. But that's just me anyway. Okay. So in this lesson, we also learned two adverbs which describe how infrequent an activity or event is. This is what I was trying to describe earlier Zen zen, never, not at all, and ammari, ammari, which means not often, not very much. These adverbs anticipate the negative at the end of the sentence. If you use zen zen or amari in other words, you need to conclude it with the sentence with masen. Oh, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. If you use zen zen or amari, you have to end the sentence with a masen form, like a negative, a negation form. So, watashi wa zen zen terebi o mi masen. I don't watch TV at all. At all. Zen zen terebi o mi masen. Taxi san wa amari benkyo shimasen. Taxi san doesn't really study very much, but it's negative because it's like doesn't really, so you have to make it a negative verb, you know? Negative conjugation, that's really important. Okay, the topic particle wa, right? As we saw in lesson one, the particle wa represents, presents the topics of one's utterance. Like we learned x wa y des, for example. It puts forward the item that you want to talk about and comment on. You may have also noted that the topic phrases and sentences such as Meari san wa ni nensei des and Watashi no senko wa nihongo des are the subjects of those sentences. A topic phrase, however, need not be the subject of a sentence. This is where wa gets a bit tricky. I didn't realize it was so, so early, like in chapter 3, but. We see three sentences in the dialogue of this lesson where the non subject phrases are made up of topics with the help of, help of particle wa. We'll read this now and we'll go back to read the dialogue later. Meari san, shumatsu wa. Hmm?
Ah, okay, okay, okay. And I'll explain something else why, why I paused there. But Mary, what do you usually do on the weekends? What do you usually do on the weekends? So this wa? Ah, okay, wait, wait, we'll get to it later. Kyo wa? Kyoto ni ikimasu. In the above two examples, wa promotes time expressions as the topic of each sentence. Its effect can be paraphrased into the like this, into the following. Let's talk about weekends. <laughs> what do you do on weekends? Let me say what I will do today. I will go to Kyoto. So you can think of it as like, as for the weekend, what do you normally do? As for today, I will go to Kyoto. Bangohan wa? What about dinner? Tabemasen. I will not eat. In this example, in this, the bangohan wa, is used, the wa is used in directing the listener's attention and he, thereby inviting a comment or completion of that sentence. So, like, literally in English, you would say, like, how about dinner? Which isn't even a full sentence, right? There's no verb there. How about dinner? It's like a, a question phrase, but without a full fr- Like, you know, it's like, what are we going to do about dinner? It's just like, how about dinner? Nah, not feeling it, you know? Similarly, you can be like, bangohan wa? Or like, gakkou wa ikimasen yo? What about school? I'm not going. You'll hear that a lot in anime 